Nation, God bless you tonight. This is your boy, Pastor Cobra, coming to you again of another night of Wednesday night in the Word. This is the day that the Lord has made, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, like and share this broadcast tonight. Somebody need this teaching on tonight. If you believe that, will you do that for me? Listen, I think I'm going to rename Wednesday night in the word. I think I'm going to call it life in the vine. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the true vine and there is life in it. But listen, we've been in a teaching on prayer. We believe in the power of prayer here. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and dive right into it. Luke 11 and 1. And it reads, once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Man, it was the 15th century reformer Martin Luther who said, and I quote, to be a Christian without prayer is to be alive without breathing. Catch that. To be a Christian without prayer is to be alive without breathing. Is it really an impossibility? If a person is not breathing, they are not living. Now, in a very real sense, if a Christian is not praying, they're just merely existing. Now, Luke 11, verses 2 and 4 is either uh, consciously or subconsciously familiar to most people that are watching across the world because we erroneously call it the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, we know it's not the Lord's Prayer because Jesus says this, Forgive us our sins as we forgive people who sin against us. Now, all of us know that Jesus don't sin. Come on. Jesus don't sin. So he was not given that prayer as he would pray, but he was giving them a model of how to pray. Now, keep that in mind because, see, I've done funerals of hundreds of unchurched and unsaved persons, and uh, many of them were able to quote with veracity and verbatim the model prayer now it's amazing because even unsaved people unsaved church people they know that but tonight might i argue that maybe the most overlooked part of the model prayer is its origin that 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 it did not arrive out of some vacuum but it was birthed out of and that it originated out of a righteous request that we may have never heard this prayer if one of Jesus' disciples wasn't so hungry for it. Because you see, one of his disciples, and I wish I knew which one, but one of his dudes saw him one day after he got back from praying and said, Master, teach us how to do that. Yeah, and I'm tripping because they didn't say, teach us how to stay married. My wife is tripping. They didn't, they didn't say, teach us how to get paid because brother got some bills. They, they didn't say, teach us how to deal with this culture because it's so crazy right now. They simply said, teach us how to pray. Now, the question that begs asking is, what was so attractive about Jesus' prayer life that they wanted that? Why, why come they didn't ask for something else from heaven? They simply said, teach us how to pray. Because, you see, every time they saw Jesus, he was busting a mood to pray. They constantly, they constantly saw Jesus praying. Jesus prayed. 
at every major crisis point in his life. Yeah, because in Luke, he, Luke chapter 3, he prayed at the time of his baptism. In Luke chapter 6, he prayed before choosing his disciples. In Luke chapter 5, he was found alone praying. In Luke chapter 9, he prayed with others around. And in Luke chapter 22, he prayed for Peter. And in the same chapter, in Luke 22, he prayed in the garden before his betrayal. And then in Luke chapter 23, he even prayed on the cross. At evening time, Jesus went away to pray. Early in the morning, he was alone praying. Every time we see Jesus, we see him praying. Now, I'm not the smartest person in the room, but uh, if Jesus had to pray, just, just maybe you ought to put in the chat, you and I need to pray too. <laughs> because there is something powerful hey, uh, about prayer. And the Lord gave me the power of prayer. And I want to teach on it just for a minute. Because just like Jesus' disciples asked him, Master, teach us how to pray. I can hear my GTV disciples asking, Pastor, teach us how to pray. Because, Pastor, we live in a different kind of context now. Yeah, that was back then, but this is now. So how should we pray now versus the way Jesus taught his disciples to pray? And I'm so glad you asked because the first part is going to be slow and methodical. And when the power breaks out, you won't be able to just sit in your seat. You ain't going to be able to contain it. So just stay patient as long as you can because I'm prophesying the power is going to break out. I speak this over this uh, live right now. So first of all, here it is, the reason and the rationale for prayer. Now, uh, I told you my mentor, my covering, Dr. Ari Vernon, meant, uh, recommended me this book. It's a great book by Archbishop Duncan Williams titled Prayer Moves God. Yeah, and in it, he discusses the legality of the divinity of prayer. Yeah, that Adam in the garden, remember, legally lost authority. So what did Jesus do? He righteously regained it. Yeah, when God said, Adam, don't touch that fruit. He touches it, his woman touches it, and boom, they legally lost authority. So what do Jesus has to do? He has to righteously regain it. So what the first Adam legally lost, the last Adam righteously regained it. That's good, Pastor. Woo, gee. That's good, Pastor, because Jesus, Pastor, is running this world. He's running this world, Pastor. No, he's not. Now, that's cute on paper, but that's not biblical because 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says that the little G God, the little G God of this world, that's the devil. The devil is running the wor this world, not God. Yeah, because see, if God was running this world, I wouldn't have to do funerals for somebody shooting somebody. And I have to reconcile why that happened. Why? Because there's a mean devil. See, let me tell you something. We are saved from the penalty of sin. We are saved from the power of sin. But we are not saved from the presence of sin. Yeah, the devil is still real. That's why prayer is so critical because the devil is running around in this world. That's why your father left you. That's why uh, your mother said that, that statement in, back in 1973 and you still haven't forgotten it. That's why you caught your husband doing that when you thought he was everything. That's why the one child died prematurely. Not because God doesn't love us, but because there's a loose devil. And I know Oh, they are good people. You know, you've been in church. If you've been in church any amount of time, you've heard this statement. They didn't mean no harm, but they say, Devil, I bind you. Devil, I bind you. Now, how are you going to bind what God is loose? <laughs> He is not bound unto the book of Revelation when sin, death, and the devil are thrown into the lake of fire. You can't tie the devil up and put him in your closet or in your garage. No. Now, now don't get it twisted. Now, you can come against his attack. Yeah, don't get it twisted now. You can declare the blood of Jesus through prayer, but you can't bind the devil. And some people pray that, and they're sincere, but they're just uninformed. So prayer is critical. Yeah, you got to pray. Why you got to pray, Pastor? Because you don't know what's going on. Yeah, you got to pray uh, because you don't know what's coming at you. You got to pray because uh, my, my, uh, my sweet mother-in-law is going to be with the Lord. She always tell us here, and she was a great prayer warrior. Now, that woman, she can pray. She loved to pray. And she will always tell us, you never know what's lurking in these bodies. And we don't. So that's why you got to pray. Yeah. So the reason is rationale. God wants you to talk to him. Yeah, God wants you to take whatever it is to him. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Oh, well, pastor, if God got it and he loves me, why uh, won't he just give it to me? 
<laughs> Listen, I don't design the rule. God does. He designs the rules. And the rules are, God says, I have it. You need it. It's an easy transaction. Just ask me for it according to my will. Mm. Because, see, watch this. If it's not according to my will, I'm going to say no. If it is my will, can't nobody stop me from giving it to you. All you got to do is ask me. So when you come to me and tell me, Pastor, I got a job interview tomorrow, I say I touch and agree. According to John 5, 14, if it's your will, God, open the door. If it's not your will, shut the door. Well, Pastor, pray for that we get engaged. If it's your will, God, let them two get engaged. If it's not, then let them find out something uh, about him tonight and break up with him. Whatever your will, prayer will reveal people to you before you say, I do. Ooh, teaching here, Pastor. I said, what up? I said, prayer will reveal people to you before you say I do. Now, some people spent 30 days dating and maybe just 30 minutes praying and made the biggest decision of your life. Prayer is critical. Prayer moves God. Prayer does stuff that even counseling won't do. Ooh, and y'all know Lady Cobra and I, we believe in counseling. Yeah, grief counseling, premarital counseling. We believe in that. We never read of ourselves with counseling okay and that's what pastors do they sometimes they get rid of counseling yeah they discover this power of prayer and then they throw the baby out with the bath water no we need deliverance and discussion you need to type that in the comment right there say no no we need we need deliverance and discussion come on just because i got the holy ghost i still need to go somewhere and talk about the pain of my mother and the pain of my father but i'm a baby it in prayer and between grief counseling and the Holy Ghost I'm going to get free in Jesus name good God almighty so there is the reason and rationale of prayer but secondly there is the routine of prayer yeah, do you have a routine? Now, some of you have a routine in the morning with coffee and when you go to bed. Because There should be a routine to prayer. Because Luke 18 and 1, the scripture, which is filled today, and Jesus spoke a parable and says, watch this, men should always to pray and what? Not to faint. Another version says, and never give up. Pray. Means that men are to always pray. That's anthros, anthropology, humankind, not men. Yeah, male, not men, male, but mankind, okay? That include women too, anthros, anthropology, uh, mankind, women, children, uh, grandma, millennials, generation X, baby boomers should always pray and not faint. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and you know it, pray without ceasing. Now, I said this last Wednesday, uh, and, and watch this, pray without ceasing. Do y'all remember I said that? Catch this. I take the Bible seriously, but not literally. Come on, this is theological training. Stay with me. I take the Bible literally, uh, uh, Pastor. I have to. I have to take it literally, Pastor, because my grandmama told me God said it. I believe it. And whatever it says, Pastor, I'm going to do. So, you, Pastor, you may not take it literally, but I'm going to take it literally. Okay. All right. If you do, the Bible said if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Now, if you take that literally, you will have two holes in your head. So, because we're all a trip. So, we know that's not literally, okay? So, what's the big idea, Pastor? He's saying you can't pray 24 hours, seven days a week because how will you do homework with your children? How would you have a discussion with your wife or with your husband? How, how could you do your job? Yeah, uh, uh, and how do, could you go to work? Uh, but, but there's a greater idea, and the greater idea is that you should pray more than twice. You should pray more than three times, more than four. And now I got the revelation, been reading this all my life and never saw it. He didn't just say pray in the morning, though you should. He don't just say pray at night, though I should. He says without ceasing, which means you should have a lifestyle of prayer. Yeah, you, you didn't hear what I just said. I said a lifestyle of prayer, meaning you just walking around. And I thought <laughs> grandmama was crazy, but grandmama had a routine good God. Yeah, you thought grandmama was crazy. You, you saw grandmama walking around and saying, oh, 
think it's Jesus walking around the house and walking around the kitchen. No, grandmama had a routine. She prayed without ceasing. She didn't pray just when people got sick. She prayed all the time. Do you have a routine? Come on. You hear, do you have a routine? This is so good because I want you to catch this. Psalm 55, 17. Lord, help me teach this tonight. Here it is. Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry loud and he shall hear my voice. Woo. How many times a day do that sound like? So, you see, our Jewish friends have three set times. Prove it, Pastor. David and Daniel. Daniel uh, uh, 6, 10, and 3. Six, I mean, Daniel 6 and 10. Three times a day he turned his face to the east and he prayed. So what do we see? A biblical pattern of prayer. David and Psalm uh, 55 and Daniel 6, three times a day. Muslims, five times a day. Our Jewish friends, three times a day. Christians, how many times? Probably not. And we got the right Savior. <laughs> Y'all just missed that. They pray all them many times. Our Muslim friends, our Jewish friends, and they have the wrong Savior. And Christians, believers, we got the right Savior. So how many times do you pray a day? I told the church on Wednesday, uh, and I told this a couple of years ago, we need to set our clocks and our phones at 11.55 a.m. so at noon we can pray. So wherever you are, if you are at work, don't pray. you don't have to pray loud. Just drop your head and say, thank you, Jesus. Or what, what are you doing? Corporate prayer. Lord, I lift up my pastor. Don't pray for your money and your husband. Do that on your other time. But at noon, let's be our time together as a church and, and as a family, as the body of Christ. Let's pray for one another. I'm going to be up at 5 a.m. because uh, I told you I'm the chief <laughs> intercessor here. I'm the chief prayer officer. Why 5 a.m., pastor? Because I got to make sure your children get to school without somebody shooting the bus. Come on, I got to make sure whatever the devil had planned last night to kill you on your way to the job gets blocked in the heavenly. Some of y'all think I'm crazy, but come on, there's power in prayer. I believe it. There's power in prayer. Now, here's where everything changes because something is getting ready to break out. I got a revelation of prayer that I want to drop on you because all of you know Luke 11 and to, where he says, and he said to them, when you pray, you say, our Father, uh, uh, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, you know, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, and, and all that. And you know that. We know that. We've been, we quoted that. But what I didn't know, okay, that this prayer was a pre-Pentecostal prayer, pre-Pentecost prayer, okay? Uh, this prayer was a pre-Holy Ghost prayer. Yeah, this prayer, our Father with all in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That was a pre-resurrection prayer. Yeah, that prayer was a pre-new covenant prayer. This was an old covenant prayer that he taught because they asked, they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Jesus thinking, you don't even have the Holy Ghost. Peter, you still cuss. Judas, you still the complete devil. Thomas, you just doubt everything. So the best you can do right now is when you pray, just say, Alpha. just say, because everything is going to shift after Pentecost. Woo. But for now, you just say, our Father who art in heaven. Now, now let me show you the general model for prayer. But don't stop there because there are levels to prayer. Come on, type in the comment. There are levels to prayer. See, every decent parent taught their children as soon as they could speak English. Yeah. When you pray, baby, say now, you lay me down to sleep. You know, I pray the Lord, my soul to keep. Now, when she married that crazy fool, she going to be saying now that I have taken my medicine to go to sleep. <laughs> Come on, you need to type in a comment and say, I got too much drama for ABC prayers. Uh, I got too much going on in my life just for these little ABC prayers. I got a daughter that's out there in the streets. I got a son. I don't know where he's at. I got a mother that I got to be her mother. I got bills on the table. I've been married once already. I've been through some stuff. Me and my wife should be divorced. And I ain't got time for those little ABC prayers. I need some power to help Help me not to lose my mind and to save my family. Whew. Somebody say, Pastor, teach us, teach us. The Lord told me, and this is how I kind of heard it. Now, this is going to be kind of wordy, but 
He said, Jesus been dead over 2,000 years. Yeah. He said, for over two millennials, we have been meandering around this model prayer. Now, that would hit somebody Tuesday. He said, that was cool back then when you was three. It's still good to teach your children, you know, now lay me down and sleep my soul. It's still good for you to say that. But don't just stop there. Because you got too much going on. You, you got to enter another level of warfare. That's what I was telling my kids. You, you know, we taught our kids, you know, lay me down to sleep. But now, they, you know, when they got in high school and now they grown, they in college and out of college. Come on, you can't say lay me down to sleep because you got too much going on in your life. There's another level of warfare. You got to graduate from those baby prayers. And so for the next few minutes, every person, come here. Come to me, look at pastor that calls me your pastor or you call me your spiritual covering or your watch care pastor. I need you to trust my heart tonight. Every member need the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again. Every member need the Holy Ghost because we are in a desert place. You got a good heart but no power. You, you got money but no meaning. Now let me biblically undergird it. I, I'm going to go fast right now, so pay attention. Ephesians 6, 18, pray in the spirit in every situation. Use every kind of prayer and request there is. For the same reason, be alert. Use every kind of effort and make every kind of request for all of God's people. I read that all my life. I said that means to pray with a pure heart and let the Holy Spirit lead you on what to say. That's what I thought it meant. But then Jude, verse 20, says, but you, beloved, building yourself up, not your neighbor, not even your family, but building yourself up because you got stuff on your mind. You ain't got to get high. Your brother smoke weed to build himself up. Your girl have to have some man to affirm her, to build herself up. She got so low self-esteem, she always had to have some man to tell her that she's beautiful. She will settle for a lesser man to hear that she's okay. She needs somebody to build her up because her father, her first relationship, she been dropped so much she always needed affirmation from a man and from others but Jude says I got a way Woo! you can build yourself up Jude 120 said build yourself up everybody hey, on your the most holy face how praying in the Holy Ghost Woo! oh man God I feel God in here and then lastly the rhythm of prayer Come on, type in the comment, type in the chat, the rhythm of prayer. We have rhythm. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 4.15, here it is. What is the outcome then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the mind also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the mind also. NLT, 1 Corinthians 4.15, NLT said, well then, what shall I do? I will pray in the spirit and I will also pray in words I understand. I will sing in the spirit and I will also sing in words I understand. That now allows me to cross-pollinate, to go back to Ephesians 6, 18, when he says pray in the spirit. He wasn't talking about my mind. When Jews said building yourself up, he wasn't talking about with my mind because he said praying with the Holy Spirit. How do you know, pastor? Because exegetically, I have to tie it to 1 Corinthians 14 where Paul makes a difference with my mind from my spirit. I ain't crazy. I use my mind when I pray. So when I get on my knees, I say, Lord, bless my wife, bless my mother, and bless my children, bless the members of Greater True Vine, the GTV Nation out there. But I'll make a mistake if I stop with my mind because my mind is too myopic. There's another level and there's a place if I shut up and let the spirit pray. My spirit knows what's going through going through my son's mind that mama don't know. Oh, which is why I can't pray with my mind with my deep self. I got to get out of my mind with my analytical smart self and say, let me shut up, God, and you take my mouth. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah, now, now what I'm about to do is help you. Get your rhythm and pray in the spirit. Yeah, pray in tongues. Let the Spirit have his way. This is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I'm getting ready for prayer. 
Woo, hallelujah. Yeah, you, you let the spirit take over your tongue. You pray in the spirit. Yeah, you pray with your mind, but you also don't stop there, but you pray in the spirit. I believe God is up to something. We have broken into a new era, and this is that. God has begun with our church. Hallelujah. And we're bringing it back. We, it's not really a new era because we always been praying. We was, This church was built on the foundation of prayer, but we're coming to another level. We're f getting the people of God to fall back in love with prayer not just pray when something happened not just pray because that's the christian thing to do no we, we're transformation we're bringing transformation to cities communities and to nations hallelujah i believe that that fasting on wednesdays from 6 a.m to 4 p.m by yourself and the whole church will help with breaking and destroying yoke jesus said this kind go with uh, not out but by what prayer and fasting it will make the work easy for you we do the same here and we'll be standing with you in prayer and after every service hallelujah lord please block retaliation and reactions and cover our families lord by the blood of jesus against retaliations and demonic revenge hallelujah i'm praying that even now because see luke 10 19 and, and Isaiah 54, 17, Lord, enforce it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Mm. See, after serve, before service, and at, at 9 a.m. here, we gather the intercessors, and we pray to cover the church. Yeah, the elders, the leaders, the, the ministers, the evangelists, everybody, you know, the family, we we, we spend 9 a.m. and 9 a.m. we spend an hour before we get on live and start our Sunday morning worship because prayer is critical. It, prayer is critical, y'all. Oh, my God, I feel God. Prayer is so critical. I got to stop right here. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this tonight. Hope you learned something and gained some insight or, or something tonight. This word, this teaching illuminated your spirit and in your mind that we got to go to another level in prayer. Yeah, we, there, there's a deeper yeah, a prayer. And so listen, if you need prayer tonight, I need you to dial that number or or you can send us an email. Somebody will get back with you. Yeah. Or you can type in the chat right now. Pastor, put me on the prayer list. Pastor, I need a prayer. You ain't got to tell all your business on this chat. But just say, pray for me. Just All I do, all I need is your name. Because, see, it's important that, that, that I target your prayer. And I'm going to teach on that. We target the prayer. Yeah, yeah. We target the prayer. So I'm going to call your name out. Hey, hallelujah. That's why we got on our website. Uh, say my name. Say my name in prayer. You click on that and you put in your prayer request and we have our intercessors and we pray. We gather them up. This past Sunday, we gather all the, the prayer requests that have been called in and have been emailed and we laid it out before the altar last uh, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. at 5 in the morning and our intercessors got here and, and laid and covered them with prayer and, ooh, and God moved. Hallelujah. And I received calls on this week. Those on those prayer requests, they say they felt God's presence in their life, that things have shifted. And then some of them even called and said, it didn't change the situation, but it changed me about the situation. So prayer moves God, y'all. Prayer moves God. I can't say it enough. Prayer is critical. Come on. Come on. Prayer is critical. And I know we love all this other stuff that come with, but prayer is critical. Somebody type in that. Prayer is critical. All right. God bless you. I got to go. I got to leave you alone. Listen, why don't you sow a seed on tonight? Listen, whenever you receive a word, and it's really a good word, and it's touching, and it's God's word, come on. Why don't you seal it with an offering? I'm not going to tell you what to give, but give something. Never go before the Lord empty-handed. Now, you're saying, Pastor, that's not biblical. No, that is biblical. It's in the Bible. Reading those that never come before the Lord empty-handed. So if you can, if you have the means, whatever it is, every little bit helps because it helps us. Wednesday night offerings helps our outreach. I'm just going to say this right now. Wednesday night offerings, so wherever you ten, five dollars whatever you have, it really helps us because we do have an outreach center here, and it's impacting communities and lives. And so that's what we use our Wednesday night offering from. Now, you can 
to give your tithes on Wednesday night. You can give anywhere, but like I said, for an offering, a free will offering. Um, but you also can pay your tithe, but your free will offering, and I'm making it plain, will go through our outreach center. All right? So it doesn't necessarily go to the church. It goes for our outreach. And so um, because our outreach are the hands and feet of Jesus. Yeah. We make Matthew 25. Here it is. Matthew 25, come alive. And what is Matthew 25 when he says in the scripture, Jesus, and we're talking about Jesus' ministry, ministry, when he says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And that's what we do here at Greater True Vine. That's, that's our DNA. Giving is what we do. Yeah, we, we do our prayer, but after we pray, we get to doing. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we action. When we get up off our knees, we, we put it into action. And so thank you for everyone that have given on Wednesday night. Like I said, whatever it is, whatever the Lord put on your heart, there are many ways to give. But that's what Wednesday night's offerings are. It goes to our outreach. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Listen, don't forget, I'm so excited. September 11th, September 11th, our family and friends day. And my cousin, the pastor, Bertrand Bailey Jr. Oh, look him up. <laughs> He's somebody's preacher and singer. We're going to have a great time, you all. Why don't you come invite your friends? Uh, we're all going to be masked up CDC guidelines. It will also be virtual. But listen, help us make this one of the biggest events of the year. All right, will you do that? And, uh, and so we want you to participate and there are going to be uh, things on the screen that you can also help participate. Uh, like, share. Let's just, uh, let's just blow the internet up. Tag somebody. You know, share it on your, on your social media page, okay? All right. Well, God bless you. Remember this. Come Sunday morning, 10 a.m. We would love for you to meet us here if you're around the DFW area. Amen. Come in with your mask. If you don't have one, we have one for you. But come in. Let's praise the Lord. And uh, also, you can, if you're not in the DFW area, you can watch us virtually, okay? And remember this, why settle for good when great is available? God bless you. Can't wait to see you. Bye-bye.